forest plot, also known as a blobogram, is a graphical display of estimated results from a number of scientific studies addressing the same question, along with the overall results. It is important for clinical reasoning that high evidence levels are used. Therefore, systematic review and meta-analysis are the perfect tools. A systematic review is a collection of all studies on a certain topic, which meets certain demands, such as inclusion cr criteria and quality. A forest plot is a part of a meta-analysis and is a statistical procedure used in this study design. This data analysis summarizes the evidence of different studies about one specific topic. A systematic review collects all the studies on a certain topic. In fact, a systematic review can be seen as the creation of a forest, where the studies are the trees. But, the results of a systematic review can be quite confusing. You receive a pile of information and it's difficult to extract the exact knowledge you're looking for. It's like getting lost in a forest. You lose your orientation and the thick, thin, long and short trees with their different fruits all look alike. Or don't they? So, a forest plot can be considered as a compass which shows you the way out. It gives a visual statistical overview of all the studies included in the review. The trees in a forest all have the same purpose, namely providing oxygen to our air. This can be compared to the included studies in a meta-analysis, which all have the same purpose. For example, measuring the effect of exercise on pain. The studies are combined and a pooled effect is calculated. After discussing the situation and the purpose of our forest plot, it is time to explain a little more about the content of this amazing tool. A forest plot consists of different elements. When we look at the whole, we see all the studies included in the meta-analysis listed up under each other on the left side. Next, we will discuss the visual aspects of the forest plot. The squares represent the mean effect of one specific study included in the review. The horizontal lines on both sides of the squares represent the confidence interval around this effect. The size of the square depends on the sample size. The bigger the square, the bigger the sample size. The strength and importance of one study within the whole review depends on this sample size. A study with a large sample size is more important than a study with a smaller sample size. Thus, the sample size in a, is a measure of the weight of the study. The vertical line in the middle represents no significant effect. The effect is only considered significant if the confidence interval does not cross the vertical line. The size of the effect can also be interpreted. The larger the distance between the square and the vertical line, the larger the effect. In this way, we can distinguish small and large effects. If the effect is stated right from the vertical line, the effect is in favor of the control group. If it's on the left, effects are in favor of the intervention group. The visual representation of weight, effect and confidence intervals can also be presented in numbers, in a column on the right. At the bottom of the forest plot, the pooled effect is presented. This is the effect of all the studies put together. A pooled effect is different from a mean effect, because it considers sample size and variance of the study. This line contains the so-called Weiber or diamond. The Weiber expresses the pooled effect size. The smaller the Weiber, the more precise the effect size. If the Weiber crosses the vertical line, there is no significant pooled effect. If the Weiber does not cross the vertical line, there is a significant pooled effect in favor of control or treatment. The larger the distance between the Weiber and the vertical line, the larger the effect. In this way, we can distinguish small and large overall effects. When we get back to our forest, we know that not every tree has the same number of branches, the same leaf form or the same fruits. Thus, some heterogeneity exists between the trees. The same applies to the studies. Heterogeneity between studies may exist due to different study population, male or female, 
duration of the study, two weeks versus six months, or more methodological differences such as variability, the study design, risk of bias, etc. In the forest plot, the heterogeneity across the studies is presented as the I-square. I-square can range from 0 to 100%. The lower the heterogeneity, the more comparable the studies and results are. If this value exceeds the threshold of 50%, heterogeneity may be too big to compare the results and thus you may not interpret the pooled effect size. Fortunately, authors have several options to cope with heterogeneity. Example given, check data again, do not do a meta-analysis or interpret results, exclude outlining studies if an obvious reason is present, or explore heterogeneity by conducting subgroup analysis or meta-regression. The division in subgroups give researchers the possibility to investigate heterogeneity. Example given, create a subgroup on age, geographical location, gender, etc. When heterogeneity drops, the results can be interpreted for the subgroup. With this forest in your mind, you will understand and never forget how to interpret a forest plot.